Hi there, Doug Greenwald with the Convergent Technologies Advanced Solutions team and continuing our series on technologies for companies returning to the workplace. Today, we're going to be looking at how to also stay compliant with your deployments. Authorities having jurisdiction are requiring masks and facilities, continue to ask for social distancing and putting capacity restrictions on buildings to further reduce the risk of COVID transmission. Video analytics have become an important overlay that many manufacturers and software providers have been pushing into the marketplace. Joining me today is Gerald Becker with Safer, a division of Real Networks, who will take you through the infrastructure requirements, capabilities of the analytics, and how companies are actually making use of this new data. Before we address the topic at hand, I did want to share that you should keep a watch on the Convergent Newsroom and LinkedIn pages for additional videos upcoming, including an introduction to touchless access control and an update with FLIR on their new line of thermal cameras specifically for elevated skin temperature. Gerald, thank you for joining me today. If you could just share a brief background about yourself as well as safer. Yeah, I appreciate you having us, uh, Doug. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us to this uh, presentation. So first and foremost, uh, Gerald Becker, I head up uh, sales and business development in North America for Safer. Uh, Safer uh, being a, a, a business unit of Real Networks. Uh, Real Networks has actually been around for quite some time, uh, well over two decades. In fact, uh, we're pioneers in streaming audio and video, stemming way back from 1995 when we kicked off Real Audio. And uh, <clears throat> throughout the years, we've uh, brought several technologies to the market uh, to include Real Video, uh, Rhapsody, which I'm sure is a very familiar brand out there, Real Times, Contacts, and Safer, which we officially launched globally in 2018. So a little bit more background in regards to uh, Safer in itself. So Real Networks uh, has actually been um, a big staple in the IT world as far as uh, signature brands, which you could see from this slide. Uh, we've been doing a large scale business uh, from B2B to B2C solutions across several geographies and industries globally. In fact, uh, one of our products, Real Times, has a total of 30 million active users in our cloud with over 50 million plus faces in that system. We've also developed a product uh, uh, that's a USA uh, intercarrier messaging system that's been up, uh, up and running for over 15 years with 100% uptime and almost 2 point, 2 point plus billion messages per day that's being run by some of the uh, major carriers throughout the world. Awesome, well, thank you for the intro to Safer. Uh, I know we've both been talking with enterprises about how they can monitor and address the requirements of local jurisdictions with regards to COVID mitigation. The biggest concern is how do they achieve this with as much of their existing investments as possible to reduce spend when revenue is down and expenses are rising? How is Safer come to market to be able to meet some of these requirements? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So first and foremost, uh, you know, nobody would have predicted uh, uh, what COVID would have done globally. I mean, it's brought a tremendous amount of disruption to every single market, every single vertical, every single business and home uh, throughout the world. And, and to be quite honest, uh, nobody was expecting this and nor, nor was safer. And uh, what we did is that immediately after uh, COVID had hit, uh, we started thinking about uh, new ways that we can help uh, businesses and, and, and companies get back to normal in the sense of how we can provide technologies that would either create a new sense of, of, of safety and or even potentially offer new ways to be able to monitor and improve operations within the enterprise. So one of those being face mask detection, which is something that we've really developed uh, uh, increasingly here in the past few months by continuously uh, training our neural nets to develop and grow from our existing libraries and algorithms and additional technologies that we've also continued to uh, enhance were uh, uh, occupancy counting, which is something that we had already developed through uh, counting through face and also through uh, people detection, which is another technology that's really uh, grown for us. And then last but not least, something that's always been a staple for SAFER, which has been access control using biometrics. Uh, we've always used it in the sense for two-factor authentication, but more and more nowadays, we're starting to see that people are trying to go with biometrics as a single factor uh, to authenticate to go into properties for frictionless access. Awesome. So once these overlays are in place, how does an organization operationalize this? I, I can't imagine the intent is to have a security guard run down the hall where a CEO and CTO are having a conversation and separate them, send them back to their rooms, right? What are the use cases you're seeing and, and really how does an organization use this today? Yeah, so that's probably one of the biggest hurdles that many organizations enterprise are seeing is like, 
you know, I didn't budget for this new norm. I didn't budget for all this new technology is going to be required to bring onto the property. How do we do this with minimal uh, budget up front? How do we do this using existing products or existing equipment that we already have on the property? And that's very, that's, that's actually very easy with us. And, you know, first and foremost, as far as video overlays and or video integration, most of the time, in fact, a pretty high percentage of opportunities that we go into that are trying or testing our new our solutions for COVID, we can use existing camera implementations that are in their enterprise. And we can connect to existing cameras through several ways, either on Viv, uh, via RTSP, uh, through a gateway, which is uh, traditionally done through the VMS, and or even uh, on the edge with some cameras, we can actually implement our solution directly to the camera, provide those advanced analytics that provide those use cases for COVID. Uh, not only that, uh, you know, we can operate standalone or within the framework of an existing VMS. So you don't have to rip and replace, but you can add additional value to the existing systems that you have. It could be on-prem or in the cloud. Excellent. So, you know, what, what does it take for an organization to go live with this new reporting? So it, it sounds easy, but what's that architecture look like and, and what's it typically take from a time to value perspective once somebody says go? Sure, so I'll give you a, pers a perfect case in point. Uh, in fact, it was early on when COVID had actually uh, broke out in the US and I'd actually been inquired about our solution directly on LinkedIn by one of our clients. And you know, they said, hey, you know, we found you on a partner site and you know, we see some tremendous value in what we could do with you all. And we'd like to test this. Is there any way that we can get this downloaded in our servers remotely without having anybody on property to get this up and running for a test? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's 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 absolutely a way we can a VPN, we can remote in through TeamViewer, we could do any sort of uh, uh, implementation remotely. And with that being said, within a matter of one week, that specific client was testing. They were in pilot. Within a matter of a few other weeks that passed by, they had uh, reached out to their systems integrator got quotations, uh, got estimates on existing equipment, new hardware that would be required that was shipped out to them. And literally within a month and a half or so, they were up and running fully functional within one site and now exploring to go nationwide with the solution. So long and skinny of it is, is that you can literally install, implement the solution within a matter of hours. And if you're looking to do a big site, I mean, it's just a matter of architecting the solution, planning it out. And within a few days, you should be up and running fully functional. Perfect. So obviously, I got to ask the question, having new equipment or software sitting on a corporate or existing security VLAN, there's typically an IT and security review. What's the typical security review you're having to go through? And, and especially with the time constraints for these deployments, what hurdles or what challenges might an organization expect to have to overcome bringing SAFER into their, into their uh, systems? Sure. So we look at IT as an integral stakeholder in all opportunities that we're dealing with. Uh, you know, long are the days when you deal only with loss prevention or only security or only property management. Uh, IT plays an integral component in architecting the solutions, considering the fact that it's going to be residing on their network. They will be administering, they will be potentially procuring hardware, equipment, in partnerships with these other business units within these organizations. So you know, we always like to bring in IT early on when we're discussing these particular conversations regarding the solution, because it's going to be a lot more than just the use case. It's going to be like, what's the day-to-day -day impact? What's the throughput required? What is this going to be as far as camera bandwidth required to actually get this working correctly? So I always emphasize when we're going into the opportunity early on, you know, make sure that we get all the stakeholders on board because we need to make sure that everybody understands what the impact on the day-to-day -day is going to be. Once we get past that, then it's fairly easy to uh, go through the ebb and flow at that point in providing all the third party materials that are required as far as technology goes, any sort of material required as far as privacy, security, architecture, all that stuff just comes into play immediately thereafter. Perfect. So you have some really nice dashboards that allow us to see, you know, mass compliance and, and perform some people counting. I assume that you can perform some type of digital signage as well. So as people come into the facility, they can have a pretty good idea of, you know, what capacity looks like, how what mass compliance looks like, so that they know they're entering into a space that is safe for them and their families. You got it. You got it. I actually have a couple of sample demos I'd like to show you regarding that. So first and foremost, with mass detection. Mass detection in and itself is uh, does not bring value unless you're actually 
notifying people when either faces are not included or they're included, such as the case right here where my face gets included by my hand. And then in this next one, we're actually bringing in uh, my face mask. You can see the emoji comes on. Within the VMS, you can see that right here, we immediately get the face recognition alarm event. Then when I turn around, I'm going to put the face mask on. Then you'll see the visual event immediately thereafter within Genetech, where it'll actually say, hey, mask face has come into view. So this is an alarm event, an event to action, where you can actually see what's going on at a given time. This could then get pushed to digital signage, could be sent to emails, could be text. And here's another scenario with several faces, and we're detecting every single one of them with a face mask on. So as you can see, uh, any large volume of people coming into the field of view, we're able to immediately detect if they are indeed wearing a face mask. And at that point, provide the visual event to action workflow. Are people wearing a face mask past this limit, uh, beyond this line? If they're not, maybe sound an audible, maybe through uh, a speaker. Please put on your PPE mask for your safety and our employees' uh, safety as well. Now, you did talk a little bit about occupancy as well. It's the same thing with the occupancy. In that same, uh, when we're talking about social distancing and making sure that we're keeping uh, uh, areas uh, uh, you know, occupied to a level where it's not gonna create any potential issues, what we also do is create uh, digital signage through, say, for instance, a public view monitor. As you can see it's 40 people in. This person comes in, there's now 41 total. In this area right here, we actually have a live dashboard in this transportation client's environment. As you can see, there's a camera that's placed overhead, an existing camera. So looking at objects, looking at people walking through, and you can see it increments. And when we hit an alarming point, when it goes to 69 to 70, it turns yellow. So now you get the visual indicator. And then once we reach that, that barrier of 100%, then goes to red, which then can create that alarm event telling people, hey, let's uh, hold the line, let's keep people out so that we can make sure that we keep everyone safe. So you'll see a myriad of different widgets on here as well, such as percentage of people wearing masks and age variances as well. If you wanna actually take a, ch uh, take a look as to who your demographics as far as age are at the property. Perfect. So Obviously, you're performing a degree of facial recognition. Right now, facial detection for those overlays. But I've spent some time in another video addressing the emerging need for touchless access control. And SAFER has been growing significantly in the touchless access control space. What's unique about your facial recognition? And what are key considerations for companies looking to migrate away from cards or traditional biometrics for access? Yeah, so that, that in itself is probably one of the biggest drivers for SAFER right now is frictionless access control. Uh, we, we did a lot of access control prior to COVID, but even more so now, I would say the majority of our use cases and POCs and even opportunities that we've been talking to on a day-to-day -day revolves around access control. And we've been dealing a lot with transportation, with theme parks, with large venues, uh, sporting uh, uh, um, uh, properties. And how do we get people in without having to bring out a ticket, bring out a badge, bring out a card that needs to be swiped? no longer having to have them go ahead and use a pin pad, but just use face as an identification or even just a ticket in in uh, parallel with face. So as you can see here, I have one additional video that actually highlights several use cases that indeed uh, cover that same topic. So as you can see, here's a person with a face mask with an optical uh, turnstile coming through, another optical uh, style for fast tracking in. Then here's a scenario with another person coming in using face as an ID frictionless all the way through as she comes out of the elevator through a double glass sliding door also using face as an id instead of badging in opens the door right up for her additional partners in other parts of the world also creating these uh, products where using face and id opens right up turnstiles coming up to a turnstile using face as an id opens right up as you can see try to go back out and it actually won't allow the person back out and then last but not least this really shows how quickly and frictionless it is. As you can see in this process, people are actually coming up. It tells the people to look. Good to go. Exit to your right. And then last one. And those are several scenarios, as you can see, as far as our frictionless access control. Gerald, this was great. I really appreciate the introduction to these analytics as well as taking the time to walk through some of this touchless, frictionless access. Thanks so much for having us, Doug. I appreciate it.
You bet. And for our viewers, if you'd like to understand how this can be deployed in your environment, click the link below to get in touch with myself or someone on our team that can specifically walk through your requirements. Until next time, stay safe, wear a mask, and thank you for doing your part to help your company bring people back to work safely and responsibly.